Are you guys able to hear fine? So uh, welcome to the uh, webinar on how mechanical engineers can make successful careers in building and construction. I am Anupam Jain and uh, I am joined with Colonel Grover. Uh, I would uh, hand it over to Colonel Grover to introduce himself. Well, I am Colonel Grover. I am here at RICS SB as a professor in uh, uh, you know, School of Real Estate. Primarily, we are uh, running into uh, running a particular course which is called Procedure Diploma in Facilities Management. And it is about this particular aspect which I would like to interact with you in greater detail as we go along after Anupam's presentation. Great. And uh, as an introduction to myself, uh, I am from the um, industry. I'm an adjunct associate uh, professor in the School of Construction at the RICS School of Built Environment, MIT University. And um, uh, my, uh, you know, expertise has been mostly in the areas which uh, mechanical engineers tend to like, related to energy, related to uh, buildings for sure, and uh, by uh, uh, training, I am an architect and a mechanical engineer both. So uh, with that, uh, should we start and get into the, some specifics of um, what we want to discuss today? I'm just trying to na navigate to the next slide. So with the, the with so many options out there, as a mechanical engineer, when you graduate from school and uh, you have been working in the field, you have seen a couple of uh, uh, careers, you know the options that are there available to you, you realize that there are a couple of uh, sectors in which you can uh, work. And uh, the question primarily that uh, faces, uh, you know, uh, which you face, is which sector to choose and uh, it's a difficult uh, question and you sometimes want to shift between sectors but uh, some of the things going through through a person's mind is what is the scope of uh, that sector uh, what is the uh, opportunity in that sector what is the demand for professionals as an individual you are investing in your career and it's not uh, uh, keeping a short-term view of uh, your skills but rather how you want to spend uh, and create a career and expertise in a particular field. So you definitely want a good paying and uh, uh, preferably a global career where you are exposed to uh, different uh, organizational cultures, different uh, geographic cultures and uh, providing you some stability in the career as well. So these uh, sectors that you see on your screen are typically the sectors that uh, mechanical engineers uh, typically tend to enter in, starting from automobiles to buildings, defense, power, manufacturing. A lot of you might be into automobiles and manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, energy. Undoubtedly, that is uh, the undercurrent for all of the industries, construction, biotech, aerospace. And uh, today, I want to talk specifically about the the three sectors which are related to buildings, construction and energy and how they relate to mechanical engineers and how a career can be made in these three sectors. So there's a bunch of uh, numbers on your screen right now and uh, they present uh, the business case for being in the sector. So the built environment has uh, about a trillion Dollar, US dollar infrastructure investment which is expected uh, over a period of 2012 to 2017. So that just gives you a benchmark of where we are today and moving from there to how 97 million jobs are expected to be created in the period between 2011 to 2020 and how 7.5 billion square feet is the estimated annual requirement of real estate space across across asset classes. Now that's a good sector to be in, in to my mind, but there is an 80% shortage of skilled manpower, which roughly translates to 140,000 FM, which is facility management professionals, which are, who are required every year. So there's definitely a huge demand 
and uh, demand uh, and uh, when there is huge demand and less in supply then uh, no wonder the salaries are quite good right so um, some more statistics a 15 trillion dollar investment in the power sector alone in the 2012 to 2017 period india is the fifth larger produce largest producer of consumer and consumer of electricity the energy management market to grow double its size by 2020 now this is a specific interest to mechanical engineers uh, because energy management is understood by uh, mechanical engineers better than any other engineering branch and uh, uh, having that connect with the built environment and how energy is managed in a sector which consumes a large portion of the energy used in the country uh, play, uh you know speaks volumes about the uh, job scope and the requirement of qualified professionals who can operate in this space the generation capacity steadily increased from 10.5% of cg cagr from 20 2009 to 2017 and 100% fdi has been allowed and immense support through policy has been provided by the government obviously uh, we see 262.7 thousand professionals required in the technical job roles in the power sector by 2020 and 293 domestic and global companies to generate 266 gigawatt of power in the next 5 to 10 years again related to energy but now we are talking on the generation side and uh, if you are following the news at all you would know that uh, not just in india but across the globe the focus has been on renewable energy and uh, where even if i talk about renewable energy let's say solar even in solar the solar rooftop is the most in demand it is the most uh, uh, you know pushed sector by the government by the industry and that requires rooftops which is buildings so managing designing controlling the entire project life cycle and uh, executing the projects as well as managing the energy use is a huge uh, job role which in itself has seen many uh, new entrepreneurial ventures come in and uh, at the same time uh, you may be aware that uh, almost uh, you know uh, a dozen states are in the process in, within india itself are in the process of creating power purchase agreements where they are buying electricity back from the consumers the excess electricity which is produced on the rooftops of individual buildings and that has presented a, an unparalleled business case and uh, most of these uh, uh, setups require uh, qualified professionals and in some cases it is mandated that for instance a bureau of energy efficiency certified energy auditor or an accredited energy auditor only to lead these energy audits to lead these uh, energy performance contracts epcs as they are called and that's the opportunity here when we talk about construction then apart from civil engineers mechanical and electrical engineers are sought after by construction companies for projects and that's uh, uh, no brainer while the civil engineers uh, work on the structure the mechanical and electrical put the veins through which the electricity the energy runs inside the organism which is the building so as a professional how does it uh, look like as a civil engineer you may be uh, tied to a building for a long time while it is being designed while it is being constructed but as a mechanical engineer or an, an electrical engineer you uh, do the really exciting stuff which is managing the energy right from the uh, drawing table to the actual site execution the commissioning making sure whatever has been designed on paper by the mechanical engineer has actually been translated into a functional system on the site that is the commissioning part as well as now exiting the project fairly quickly and you don't need to be tied down to one project and that uh, presents an opportunity to work on a, a bouquet of projects which can range across clients and your interaction uh, with different architects and team members increases as you gain more experience in the field so you can uh, imagine working on projects like 
a bullet train, smart cities, skyscrapers, which involve a whole new dimension of mechanics. As buildings are getting more uh, integrated, uh, not in their design, but also in their operations, when we talk about uh, an integrated building management system, when we talk about building automation systems, uh, there are uh, mechanical systems. There are, there are mechanical devices which are required and which control the flow of uh, information, be it the meter data, be it the electricity consumption, be it the metrics, and all of that is fed into central systems. And all of that information flow, all of that electricity flow, all of those controls are led by a mechanical engineer in the building. And that is a, uh, that is a field that drives us closer to innovation and not just uh, installation and exiting out of a project. Specifically talking about the building sector, um, we know India is developing and uh, so are a number of uh, nearby nations as well. But whatever has been built also needs to be managed and that is a task which uh, has to be performed irrespective of whether the economy is going up or down or whether there are enough uh, new projects getting launched or not. Whatever build space has been uh, in existence, it has to be managed primarily from a energy perspective. There will definitely be maintenance issues, but primarily you want to talk about how to uh, optimize your operations, continually upgrade your technologies, your systems, so that A, you are able to minimize some energy cost, but also deliver superior performance with the help of the given existing civil structure. So the maintenance and operations of these buildings and infrastructure requires mechanical engineers who understand how to optimize and manage the energy, the efficiencies, the air conditioners, the water treatment plants, the fire systems, the building management systems. The, there are so many systems inside a building and I've often worked with the the chief engineers in large commercial uh, you know buildings and uh, they 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 work uh, like a you know mini business unit where they are managing a myriad of uh, energy related systems and they present the business case to the ceo of the company who then manages the building as an asset and that building is actually an asset on your balance sheet right so it's a very, very crucial function and that requires uh, trained professionals. Also, each building is different and even though there, there may be increased automation, we will still require specifics to be taken care of by uh, trained professionals. So uh, indeed, each day is uh, uh, presents its own sets of challenges and is unique uh, as a experience for the uh, people working in it. So, as a, as a mechanical engineer working in a factory versus working in a dynamically evolving environment, I would definitely find uh, the conveyor belt uh, not at all any more exciting, uh, but rather uh, a building which is presenting a, a bunch of these new controls, new technologies, new companies are coming in, uh, presenting uh, energy management systems, presenting water management systems, how to control the water quality, how to minimize the water consumption, how to install treatment systems, how to, uh, you know, uh, uh, put sensors somewhere, how to control the, uh, you know, use of electricity, how to measure how different people in different profiles and different schedules are using electricity and so on. And since we are talking about electricity so much, coming to the energy part, by 2030, the world will require 45% more power and 30% more water than it did in 2012. And uh, if you look at the local if municipal you know, regulations such as uh, the building bylaws, which buildings uh, have to comply to while they are being constructed. But also, if you look at the operational guidelines, you will find that certain cities like Mumbai do not allow a building to release its sewage into the municipal mains. And that's a huge challenge because now a system has to exist on the site, which will start treating all the waste water on the site and then innovative techniques exist on utilizing utilizing that same water inside the building, inside uh, different kinds of uh, 
end uses such as toilet flushing or landscape irrigation and so on cooling tower make up water and operating a cooling tower is one thing and operating a cooling tower with recycled water is another there is a host of new systems uh, chemical dosing is required and all of these things have to be monitored on a daily basis on a monthly basis on an annual basis and it's a complete scientific process that requires people who know what they're doing and uh, there's a huge shortage of such people so professionals who know how to optimally use and reuse energy just like water energy uh, cannot be well recycled just like water can be but energy saved is energy created right so you have to continually uh, be abreast of the market developments you have to be continuously abreast be abreast of the uh, different types of uh, techniques or technologies that fit your building your budget your financial planning for this month for this financial year for the next 5 years and how you plan how you do the project management for the entire uh, set of energy efficiency measures which you are going to implement in your building what makes sense having an energy audit done and getting the budgeting business case financing collections and then overseeing the execution of these practices so built infrastructure and building consume almost 40% of the energy that we produce and if we are managing the energy electricity in this 40% of the total energy that we produce means we are a serious player in the business you can choose to be an energy auditor and help in developing a sustainable world and that's the dimension that uh, you know the more savings you create the 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 less carbon emissions you are uh, generating and the more responsible a citizen uh, you are and if you make the company look good then uh, uh, that's the, that's a, that's a road so coming to the uh, mba in construction project management this is a, a two year full time mba program run by the school of uh, built environment at um, mit university rics school of built environment and here over a period of 2 years you are exposed to uh, quantum bursts uh, in specialized uh, disciplines and you are encouraged to become industry accredited in those specialized areas so that when you enter the stream after graduation you not only have theoretical knowledge which puts you a few years ahead of the experienced lot but you also have the industry credentials to back that knowledge and speak the same language that other industry professionals are speaking when you are in the market and operating side by side with them so you will be exposed to models tools and techniques to manage time cost quality safety risk sustainability human resources and a number of other aspects such as energy management that we talked about on large and complex projects of the built environment sector they would be adept the they means you you would be adept to work as a project manager for development or construction firms international consulting firms multinational architectural firms or government sector organizations and if you look at the placement record of the school Uh, and if you uh, get a chance to look at the uh, profiles of the alumni of the school uh, you will see how uh, diverse they are in their uh, current job roles in the portfolios they are managing in the uh, variety of clients the variety of projects they are uh, handling and you know I, it's not that i get such emails every day but i do uh, frequently get communication back from the alumni telling me that sir Uh, we have been given a double promotion or we were uh, finding your classes to be extremely difficult but today when i am in the profession i know how to do these things i have these skills and these things have helped me grow and get a you know better uh, job role in the company and uh, that is more relevant and it is now looking uh, towards uh, a good career path for me so uh, some of the streams uh, mentioned over here are advanced energy management supply chain management leadership skills strong analytical skills problem solving skills negotiation and client care 
and sustainable practices. Uh, so these are some of the streams, uh, some of the, uh, the many quantum uh, bursts that I was talking to you about that uh, we uh, will be definitely concentrating on. And uh, I encourage you to, uh, to go through the website of uh, RICS, which is ricssbe.org. Uh, uh, and uh, that website has the complete details of all the uh, different subjects that you will be studying uh, throughout the two years of your uh, engagement with the school. So that now coming to some specialized coursework. Students undergo industry-focused training on special specialized topics such as you will be trained how to uh, understand, how to read and how to start designing and managing the mechanical, electrical, plumbing and firefighting as services for the built environment sector. You will be trained as an energy auditor for commercial establishments through subjects such as advanced energy management and uh, renewable energy sources such as solar through subjects such as sustainable practices for built environment. And at the end of these subjects, you are trained and you are ready to sit for industry accreditations, such as the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Certified Energy Auditor, Certified Energy Manager. right? And if you clear these exams, which you can after completing these uh, courses, then you are accredited by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, for instance, and then you have, you have legal powers under the Energy Conservation Act of India and that um, mandates uh, companies which are energy uh, performance uh, companies to hire you, to have you on the staff, to manage their energy and uh, even if you look at green building accredited uh, professionals, they will come from different rating systems such as LEED Green Associates, LEED Accredited Professionals. IGBC accredited professionals, Griha certified professionals, well certified professionals, and so on. And even these rating systems require, in turn, let's say a BEE certified energy auditor to audit their buildings every two years to maintain the certification. So, A, you are entering the industry with specialized knowledge. B, you are entering the industry with the industry credentials, ready to speak the language and ready to contribute to the project team from day one. Hiring you would give them that additional business. Now coming to the postgraduate diploma in facilities management. We talked about a number of the specialized subjects that you will be trained in. And uh, we also talked about how even though new building uh, stock is being created, existing building stock needs to be managed. And this is where there is a, uh, there is a huge gap in the supply of trained professionals who can actually come in to a facility and understand the different aspects of energy management, of buildings, of real estate, of finance, of people management, HR, clients, supply chain management. A lot of those competencies that is saw in the MBA CPM pie chart as well. So all of those come together in a facilities specialized domain through this one year postgraduate diploma in facilities management. And this program is designed to transform you from an engineer to a facilities management professional who manages all services and built environment infrastructure that support the core business of an organization. So we had talked about facilities management as not being a support function, but rather an asset which shows up on the balance sheet and which can drive the business growth for the company. So this one year postgraduate diploma uh, gives you a quick window into the academic uh, stream. For one year you enter the, the program and you graduate pretty soon. You are able to go through a, an internship and go towards the final job where you are trained and are able to manage a facility with confidence. Uh, then coming to uh, the accreditation part. The MBA in CPM is an accredited is an RICS accredited degree. This means that the entire uh, the entire brand of RICS is behind you. RICS is a 150 year old organization working across the globe. The member RICS, MRICS, is are the four alphabets which 
uh, spell confidence in the minds of real estate professionals all over the globe and coming from an RICS accredited school coming from an RICS accredited degree means that your capability your qualifications you are synonymous with the highest quality of education for this profession and that opens the door for the chartered qualification of RICS which is MRICS and it is extremely valuable for companies there are uh, there are specific job requirements there are specific tender requirements that only require MRICS professionals to be on the roles of a company for them to even bid for that job so globally over 500 specialized built environment courses are, are accredited by RICS in India the RICS degree is available only at the RICS school of built environment at MIT University some of the other courses which are accredited by RICS are, uh, are can be seen on the screen uh, they include the topmost names the UCL Salford NUS LSC NYU Oxford Brooks University of Cambridge and so on finally coming to the fi uh, career opportunities uh, we discussed about most of these but as a recap you can work as a facilities manager you can work as an energy auditor independent energy auditor you can work in the field of building services you can even work with MEP which is the mechanical electrical plumbing consulting companies as a quantity surveyor often uh, we have not talked about this but often these MEP firms similarly have to create the uh, the BOQs that a civil firm has to create and creating a BOQ requires the highest uh, understanding of that discipline to be able to detail out the last nut and bolt of that building and even though there will be many quantity surveyors from civil engineering background who will enter uh, the developers firm or the civil contracting firm there is a requirement for MEP qualified experienced graduates to enter the consulting business and do the MEP BOQ to understand and to execute the MEP for a building and that is another career path that you can choose we also talked about you being the project manager so when you are uh, let's say handling a facility and I'm covering the chief engineer operations and maintenance also in this one the last uh, role on the list uh, on your screen then you are in a leadership position you are leading a team you are leading a department and you are given a strategic function of managing an asset then you do require the project management skills that though in the if you started to work in the field and you uh, you know uh, took mentorship from an industry person you would probably learn in five seven years but here in a one year concentrated mode or a two year concentrated mode we are graduating you with the tools with the knowledge with the industry accreditations PMP certified right the PMP is a project management professional from the project management institute and a lot of our uh, students are uh, working towards that that spells confidence for any team to see that their project manager is a PMP certified professional right so these are some of the streams that you can work and obviously these things uh, you will take some time to uh, enter the field it is very important to have the tools with you and if you come here and if you work hard now that is extremely important that it's not sufficient to just come in and uh, get admission and expect uh, that something will happen and you will get transformed it's not going to happen you have to commit to it you have to pour yourself to it and you have to understand the importance of these things that are being taught to you if you work hard and you are able to get a good grade you have demonstrate a good understanding of these facilities our placements are, uh, are the top-notch placements in these fields some of the best companies are approaching us and asking us do you have enough people for us often our problem is we don't have enough people to give them because keep in mind these are the top companies they want the best they want the best people and if you are the best then that matchmaking can be done over here four reasons why it's time to consider buildings or energy or construction you have to be ready to meet the demand you have to be ready to widen your career opportunities 
you have to be ready to be a techno manager and you have to be ready to go global in uh, if you look at the way civil engineering mechanical engineering electronics engineering electrical engineering they work they work in silos and often you are working on your project in your domain on a technical uh, task and you don't know how the big picture is working that's no longer a desirable uh, quality in future uh, growth if you want to grow you have to be able to understand the big picture you have to be able to manage not just yourself your time but also your peers your subordinates your bosses and you have to be able to speak their language and to be able to speak the language you have to learn the principles of business and this is uh, where the mba or the pgd in fm teach you these essential business skills whether be it in accounting in finance in understanding the balance sheet in making a business case and and, and in understanding how to uh, you know create a contract how to manage your vendors you have to understand all of these and only then will you be seen as a valuable resource and a key contributor to a firm and keep in mind these skills are global what you learn here what you imbibe these uh, capabilities these uh, all of these skills are universal and there is often a demand for uh, uh, professionals to be placed and a lot of our alumni are placed in the gulf region and they are doing very well and similarly other as we are growing uh, we are getting more uh, and more uh, uh, we are getting to know where our alumni are going and some of the recruiters that uh, are working with us already are on your screen and this is a uh, uh, you know not a comprehensive list so you can see uh, all the, some of the top names you can see blackstone hines kpmg cbre jll knight frank reliance hdfc home loans Cushman and Wakefield, Black Olive Ventures, DLF, all of we have an amazing uh, you know uh, lineup of uh, recruiters who have approached us and who are working with us. And to give you an example, here are a few placements. These are our uh, graduates. Uh, so you can see a mechanical engineering graduate who pursued an MBA in real estate and urban infrastructure was placed in the embassy office parks in the commercial real estate function. another mechanical engineering plus mba in construction project management graduate was placed in shahpurji paranji in the mep team another mechanical engineering graduate plus an mba in construction project management placed in al nabuda in project management in dubai another mechanical engineering plus mba in cpm lango road in the os uh, team mechanical engineering plus mba in construction economics and quantity surveying uh, currently working in deloitte in the real estate consulting division he has recently been promoted over there aman pathak uh, mechanical engineering plus mba in construction project management placed in omex developers and uh, in the project management team so you can see how a uh, ceqs construction economics and quantity surveying guy is working in the real estate function how a real estate guy is working in the project management function and how a mechanical engineering and cpm graduate is working in a project management function as well so there is a uh, portability of skills that you create and you with the level of understanding that you create and you develop over here you are able to leverage your understanding and your skills to to increase and to enhance your career prospects how would these professionals look like in the years to come how are current uh, professionals doing in the field to give you a glimpse of that let's look at uh, this slide where i have uh, looked at two industry leaders who have a mechanical background this is rajesh uh, rajesh pongot and is an mrics mechanical engineer is the head of facilities management at spcl mr shrish wag is also an mrics with a mechanical engineering background he is the vice president of property management at rmz corp so you can see how a mechanical engineer one has specialized in the construction aspect and the facilities aspect and the other has specialized in the real estate and property management aspect right so with that uh, i would like to thank you for your uh, uh, kind attention and uh, we can now take questions uh, professor uh, kanal grover is also here and i am also here so 
thank you and we are ready to take questions nay we don't see any questions here and you can put in your questions in the q and a chat box and uh, we can see them here and answer them i see one question has come from sudeepa they are saying that i am a mechanical engineer 200 2015 pass out working as hr head admin but i am interested in core course cannot but i am interested in core cannot go for this i seems like uh, this person is asking that should they go for it so uh, a mechanical engineer working as a hr head but interested in going for this field definitely i would uh, uh, say yes sudeepa as a mechanical engineer you do have the necessary background and the skills to succeed in the course working as an hr uh, person you have already uh, i would say benefited you have gained insight into the hr aspect of a business and it's uh, it should add to your advantage and uh, not to hold you back you still have enough technical skills uh, to take you forward and there is a question from yuvraj which colonel grover will take <clears throat> with respect to placements as far as uh, pgdfm is concerned first of all pgdfm is the first course of its kind that has been started in india anywhere which is university accredited secondly our first batch has just finished their examination the entire batch has been picked up by cbre for industrial training as well as placements thereafter and some of these students have already been offered a job to by cbre so you can see the kind of uh, uh, vacuum which is there in terms of manpower required for the uh, facilities management annually you can say there is a shortage of approximately 20000 or more people at managerial level itself where we talk of a facility manager so if that is the kind of requirement by uh, 2020 the overall requirement is going to be in terms of more than 1 lakh and right now as far as the product is concerned there are hardly any people who are actually trained in facilities management and are available for this kind of profession i myself am from this industry i have done facilities management almost for 17 years with dlf post uh, my coming out from army and there i have on the job learnt various aspects of fm it was one of my uh, major uh, you know ideas that i felt that when we wanted people on ground who really understood facilities management as a profession and who could deliver with respect to particularly the building services an organization like dlf calls itself called as facilities management professionals as professionals who are dealing with building services so even our designations were like somebody was a manager building services somebody was a general manager building services so basically the building services as has been explained by anupam earlier would start with air conditioning would start with uh, water supply would start with electrical power supply etc would cover fire and uh, life safety would cover today security itself is highly technical and uh, Uh, requires real uh, technical background so when you consider all this definitely pgdfm is uh, you know a place where uh, facility management is a place where you have a very bright future and as far as placements are concerned i think we are short of the numbers so we don't have any major challenge in this aspect great so i think uh, there are a couple of more questions uh, i see sudeepa again posted a question clarifying her earlier one i am interested in core so can i go for it so yeah the answer is definitely yes you are interested in core and uh, the project management uh, program specifically will impart you with the uh, techno managerial skills so you will uh, brush up on your core skills you will add more technical skills plus you will definitely add a bouquet of management skills to your uh, skill set which will allow you to not only go to your core function but also uh, join at a managerial level then i have a question from praveen saying what about masters in germany which is best masters or mba i think the question relates to more uh, uh, whether a technical master or an mtech is a better option or an mba is a better option and to that praveen i would say that the mba that we are we have created in construction project management was specifically created 
as a techno managerial course to bridge that gap currently either there is an mtech which is a completely technical research oriented and into the academics uh, whereas on the other hand you have an mba which can be in general management or marketing or, or hr which does not speak the technical language so we formally merged these two to create a techno managerial program excuse me where you are talking about the technical aspects and how to apply them to business how to use your strengths to hone your skills and to catapult you to the next level of uh, in your career where you are able to uh, contribute at a managerial level as well so you are not giving up your technical skills you are developing on them plus you are gaining a management insight which is definitely required as you become more and more senior in your job role so uh, now yuvraj is saying that actually i am interested uh, i am a mechanical engineer passed out this year and applied to your mit which is great uh, yuvraj will be happy to go through there is a complete uh, as you would agree uh, every institution has a, a full uh, admissions uh, setup so uh, that will you will go through the process then uh, there is a question on how would re and u uh, re ui would be how would rei would be sir for mechanical guys so again i would let colonel grover answer this but my quick take on this is that you have seen the profiles of the alumni and you have seen that how a mechanical engineer did a mba in real estate and is doing really well i would start by giving an example the head of property and asset management for jln is mr rajesh pandit who is a mechanical engineer with a long experience in the field so basically as long as you have uh, uh, you know managerial uh, competence and you have technical competence to comprehend the complexities which are there today in the built environment if these two things are integrated i think you can go ahead and work in any of the fields particularly when it comes to real estate real estate today is uh, we are talking of smart technologies we are talking of buildings which are by themselves uh, you know uh, much more than just uh, concrete each building today is more like a ship which has in its basement an entire gamut of uh, electromechanical equipments which are essential for operating that complex and you see uh, any complex uh, while uh, about while about 20 is this something while you see 20% of time is there in the project uh, uh, you know execution 80% of a life cycle uh, life of a project is in terms of operations and its management and that is where your skills can come very handy and in real estate you have uh, the aspects of uh, uh, you know both finance side as well as uh, you know so you can get a macro level view of the entire project and get into project management so there is another question by vilas singh asking if there is a one year course for mep now uh, uh, vilas uh, the PGDFM is a one year specialized uh, program uh, and it does not uh, specifically teach you and train you only in MEP it will train you in a number of aspects which are required which is which is a job requirement for being a facility manager uh, whereas i would encourage you to if you want to get uh, deeper into the MEP side to go for the uh, project management uh, masters mba in cpm as you will have two years instead of one year you will be investing an, an additional year but you will be gaining a much more deeper knowledge in the mechanical engineering and uh, mechanical electrical and plumbing side you will be getting exposed to the energy auditing side you will be getting exposed to the sustainability side as well as you will also be exposed to the business and the managerial skills which are required to be a successful uh, senior person so i believe you have already completed your mechanical engineering and uh, after you are you enter the field how do you progress you have to start understanding the big picture and uh, it takes time it takes hard work there is no shortcut to it uh, and so you would i would recommend that uh, uh, need to take some time and uh, invest uh, in yourself uh, there is another question uh, one more query pgt fm or mba which is best for career see uh, as far as uh, uh, it, uh mba and pgdfm are concerned i would say uh, depends on uh, you know what is your goal and uh, there there are uh, counselors who uh, if you approach us 
uh, through the contact us uh, segment uh, who would be happy to work with you and uh, understand uh, what is your career goal and which is a better fit for you you see when it comes to facilities management it is a profession which i generally call as the new kid on the block uh, this is something which is actually already matured to some extent in western world and in us but as far as india is concerned it is actually taking off this is a field where not only your mep aspects uh, which are actually the core for facilities management uh, not only will they matter you will also have to uh, you know be learning skills which are more people oriented skills so if you are a guy who is happy to meet people if you are a guy who is happy to interact with people then this is an area where you may find a much greater satisfaction level than say pure uh, uh, project management side but eventually it is a question of where do you want to see yourself 10 years from now 5 years from now and i think we can certainly work with you and you know uh, understand your uh, uh, you know uh, ambitions or your uh, aspirations and accordingly advise you as to which will be the best fit for you and also just to add to that uh, yuvraj uh, the pgd fm is a one year uh, program so you will be able to quickly get into uh, the program gain some skills and get back into the industry start working again uh, but you have to keep in mind the the cost and benefit you know because uh, you do want to invest certain the, the 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 right quantum of time that will get you the maximum value as well right so if you thinking long term an mba uh, might be one more year but uh, again it will be uh, an accredited degree and it will be uh, you know uh, it will teach you more skills the more time you spend here the more uh, you know skills you will get the more uh, you know you will be ready to uh, excel in the market so with that i think we are uh, we welcome more questions i think pra pradeep and rakshit uh, want to ask a question uh, they please so you can ask uh, there is also a question from vilas uh, saying is there any stay facility in mumbai campus while studying so uh, i am being told that there is a stay facility there is a there is a accommodation facility in mumbai campus uh, while studying and praveen and pradeep have still have a hand raised so if you have any question we welcome that you have to type your question in the uh, chat box that's how we will be able to see your question so we uh, we ha have a, a few minutes so we can uh, so there's more from you raj actually sir i would like to work in different place from others my colleagues are uh, cho are choosing the core side just a thing i want to know that i have chosen my path right or wrong uh, i believe you raj you have applied to the uh, program already and uh, which program have you applied for uh, if you could just type that out and uh, going to the core or not that is uh, what you know we have talked about in the presentation as well um, see the going to the core might land you a job which is uh, uh, more related to let's say a manufacturing or automobiles or a more technical and you know problem solving but at the back end but like colonel grover said that if you are a people's person you like to interact you like to you know lead from the front you like to accept challenges accept challenges then a masters in business administration or a post graduate diploma in facilities management these programs will give you those skills keep please keep in mind that we do have uh, specialized courses but we also have uh, courses which will enhance your communication skills which will enhance your behavioral skills which will train you to be a better uh, person and able to lead able to all these qualities which are being uh,
discussed, you are trained in those qualities. It's not something which will happen by itself by going through more specialized um, courses. Being in the core industries, you will probably never be exposed to those uh, capabilities, to those skills, unless you spend five, seven years in that role and you gradually assume the role of a manager. The power of doing a concentrated MBA or a PGDFM is to gain those experienced years in a short duration and go further in your career, right? So now, uh, Yuvraj is saying you apply for PGDFM. I think that's an excellent choice. Yeah. You applied for PGDFM. And uh, uh, like we saw in the presentation, there's a huge uh, demand for qualified, skilled professionals. And uh, you, may, you may agree with me when I say that when we talk about core, then there are uh, there is more of supply than there is uh, currently a demand and the salaries reflect that. Uh, Praveen is now saying that uh, uh, they are pursuing a B.Tech in CBIT. What, uh, what to do, Masters or MBA, which is better? I think we have already talked about that, Praveen. That Masters uh, will get you more towards the research side, towards the theory and the technical side, whereas the MBA is a techno-managerial uh, degree. So it will push you adequately in the technical and the research side, but it will also add more skills related to business, to management, which are necessary in today's complex world, where you have to continuously reinvent yourself uh, to meet challenges uh, that are that present themselves in the industry. Any more questions? Uh, you would have to type them out for us to see them. So I think uh, with that, uh, we uh, thank you for your time and uh, uh, look forward to seeing you and welcoming you here at RICS. Have wishing a great day. Thanks. Wishing you all the best. Thank you.